What do you do when you feel like you're playing against an opponent who's clicking buttons and he's getting lucky? So we got double M, pocket sevens under the gun, reasonable raise, uh, definitely doing this. As would almost everybody else on this show, you'd probably not be invited back if you didn't. So let's see. Everything waiting on here. Ace Queen from Rufio. Where's the red hair, Rufio? I don't see a flag. Just kidding. All right, so three bet, defending, pocket pair, in position. So we're gonna have a, a pretty interesting flop action here. So check it out. Top two for Rufio. And he's gonna check. Now double M's gonna bet pot 6,900. Double M is gonna bet. And he's gonna bet 2,500. So it's about a third sizing here. I mean, I could be wrong, but if you had something like King 10, King Jack, Jack 10, and you were the pre-flop three better and you got this flop, I mean, you've got carte blanche here to just run it. Um, so for pocket sevens, and you have a diamond, there's two diamonds in the board, this might be a good candidate to check back. Uh, you can call across multiple turns and some rivers. You know, you've got so many good hands in your under the gun range that you're gonna defend with, right? You have, I mean, you have pocket queens, um, you also have pocket fives, probably. Um, but you also have like Jack-10 suited, you've got King-Queen suited, it's, it's hit or miss. You, you're not gonna, you're either way ahead or way behind. So if it's nine, now Ruth feels like, the fuck is going on here? So you can even see, Ruth feels like, now he's gonna lay the hammer down, right? He's like, this is what I wanna do. I'm gonna check raise the turn. But it, it's weird here, right? Like that makes sense from a field caller or like when you're on defense, but it's so strong when you're the pre-flop raiser and you go check call, check, you know, check raise, right? You're repping aces, you're repping queens, and then you get three bet. <laughs> he stuffs it in, you know, that was the plan, right? Get stacks in with top two pair. So when you see that homeboy over here, double M has pocket sevens, you're like, what happened? You might've looked at that double M hand and thought, man, this dude's just clicking buttons and getting lucky. Like, and I bring this up because you're gonna see this at almost every level you play. So if this feel, feels like it's, you know, way out of scope for your game, just divide by like, I don't know, 10, 20, 100, sometimes based on the straddles. But what you can do, and this is something I do almost every week, is I use logic statements. Uh, Jared Tendler calls this injecting logic. Step number one in, is uh, recognition. Right, so you wanna recognize that your emotions are starting to build a little bit, right? So you play a hand that you think somebody was just clicking buttons, right? You thought, what is this guy doing? They're just getting lucky, this is stupid. That's step one. Recognize that you feel some type of way. Enter Drake music. All right, that's copyright. So recognize that you're starting to feel some, some type of way. You have to be aware of it before you can actually take care of it. Does that make sense? So step two, deep breath. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Just. So what are we doing here with that deep breath? As you can tell, I've already started to slow down how fast I speak. Almost like I got calmer. So the reason we take this deep breath is to get more oxygen to our brain. And if we focus on that breath, on the in and the out, if you really just focus on nothing else but in and out, it's going to pause this, what is this guy doing feeling? You, you don't have that instant next moment where you continue this logic or non-logic of thinking this guy's clicking buttons he's just getting lucky poker's stupid 
you're, you're creating a barrier between you and your emotions by getting that extra oxygen into your brain. Step number three is going to be actually injecting logic. So there's statements that you can say that are gonna help you kind of come down off that ledge. I do a series called Stepping Off the Ledge. The thing I like to share when I feel like I've played a session where my emotions started to kind of come up and, and I'll share what I've done to negate that. So we're at step three and we're just gonna take one right out of the book, okay? So the first example for injecting logic Jared Tendler writes, bad players have to win. It's just variance. Keep playing well and stay in control. Why would something like that even work? Because a logic statement like that keeps you in the frame of mind of thinking logically. It sounds silly, I know. But there's something at play here that you're trying to negate and it's called the limbic brain. It's like the reptilian side of your brain that goes straight to fight or flight, where you start to think about injustice and like this guy's just clicking buttons. And then you go into fight or flight mode where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna never fold to this guy or I'm gonna start three betting him or whatever it is that you think is a good strategy to get around. It's likely because your fight or flight system has actually gotten triggered and you're not thinking strategically, you're thinking, I'm gonna get this guy, screw this guy, I'm gonna get him. by. Injecting a statement like this, it's true, right? It's logical and it allows you to keep that brain, that part of your brain like functioning because when we're playing poker, we're playing against other people's minds. It's a mind game. It's my strategy versus your strategy. Well, if your strategy has now been derailed because you're no longer thinking logically, you're thinking emotionally, Who's gonna win in the long run? So another example, straight from the book. Like I said, Mental Game of Poker, can't recommend it enough. I'll leave a link in the description uh, if you wanna check it out. So another example for running bad, let's say, is uh, today I have to weather variance and try and lose the least amount. Straight from the book, very good starting out logic statement to write, okay? I'm running bad, I have to weather the variance. This is a good one because it turns a losing session into a challenge. If you're already losing, now the challenge is to lose the least. It's not how do I win, how do I get even, it's how do I be a good loser, which a lot of poker players struggle with. They think they're not allowed to lose any session and if they lose, they're a failure. There's been times where I'm running either at expectation or I'm running well, and I'll set a goal to have a small loss because I've been playing poker for over 10 years. I know it's gonna happen. I know I'm gonna have a losing session. But when I do have that losing session, I wanna minimize it. So I, I don't want to end up monkey barreling in spots where I think I just have to plow through. I wanna be able to weather the variance and just accept that today's not my day. And the reason I'm a better poker player than some others is because when I have that losing day, it's less than when somebody else has a losing day. Does that make sense? There's a stand-up comedy skit where somebody answers the phone and it's a wrong number, but he decides to play along and pretend he works like, like and pretend that he works for the company. So later on in the skit, the reason I tell you is later on in the skit, they call him back, right? They, they make this mistake twice. So they kind of catch on that it's not really him and they ask who it is and he says, he says a different name and the person on the other line says, sounds a lot like Bruce. So to, to me, that's my logic statement. It sounds silly, but sounds a lot like Bruce. Sounds so funny to me that when I feel my emotions coming in, I just say that. And it just brings me back to that skit and I laugh in my head. I try and laugh in my head. So it doesn't always have to be an actual logic statement. You want to be removing yourself from that. This guy's clicking buttons, screw this guy, that whole line of thought. You want to remove yourself. Injecting logic is a great way to do it and creating other statements just like that to provide that separation just as good. Step four is strategic reminder. 
This one I like a lot because it's like a choose your own adventure. So what that means is you can do one of two things after you inject that logic statement. So let's say it's one of those days where you think somebody's clicking buttons and you think they're a bad player. You can say in your head something like, you know, bad players have to win too. It's just variance. I'll get my turn. Now, the next thing you want to do, decide what you want to focus on next so you can continue to think logically. So the first option is to think of only the things that go missing from your game when your emotions start to run high. But for me, it could be not slowing down on the turn when I think somebody is calling me light and I haven't been getting any bluffs through or my hands are getting outdrawn. You know, in live poker, sometimes people can just feel like you're unlucky. So they're going to peel light on the flop or pre-flop. Sometimes you'll hear like, oh, I called him because he was, you know, he's, it's not his day or something like that. You know, people are out for blood. Option number two is list all of the things in your thought process while you're making poker decisions. Step one is to think about all the things that get lopped off your game when you're no longer at your best. You know, maybe pre-flop, your discipline starts to go down. For me, I just start monkey barreling the turn because screw them. And then step two is just think of all of the things that goes through your mind when you're making poker decisions. So either of those two in this choose your own adventure are gonna help you continue on this path of staying logical in your thought process. So number five, repeat as necessary. So if you do one through four, you've recognized, you've taken a deep breath, you've injected logic, you've chose your own adventure, what you're gonna continue to think, and then you realize you look at that guy across the table and you still want to, you want to get him. Time to start over, right? Recognize, okay, I'm still in my emotions. I'm still feeling this type of way. Just start over, keep. I promise if you continue to take deep breaths, it's going to help. And then you find that logic statement. Maybe you need a different logic statement, but the key here is to keep thinking logically. Does that make sense? So we're going to keep going through this process. We're going to recognize, we're going to take a deep breath. We're going to inject logic. We're going to have a strategic reminder. Okay. That has nothing to do with the mental game, by the way. Jared Tendler mentions that too. It has nothing to do with the mental game. This is strategy, but it also helps you move forward with your logic. Step five, repeat as necessary. Step six, there is a step six, quit. You might not want to hear this, right? You thought I was going to tell you how to be invincible at the table. Mm -mm. Sometimes you just got to quit or you could take a walk. I like to take a walk first before I decide if I'm going to quit. And then sometimes at the end of the walk, I decide I'm going to quit anyways. But if you've gone through these six steps and you've repeated and you've repeated and you notice that you still want to rip this guy's head off figuratively, it's a good idea to consider, is this still a good game? Am I still able to win? Do I need to take a walk? And if you've taken that walk and you still feel like those emotions are still high, maybe it is time to quit because we're thinking long-term here. The idea of being a long-term winner, I forget, I think Slansky said this, David Slansky said this, where it's not about who can win the most amount of money, it's who can live to a thousand. <laughs> it's, it, it sounds silly, but it's who can be in, who can play well the longest for their entire life. And if you can incorporate things like injecting logic and these logic statements, you're going to have a pretty, pretty leg, pretty high leg up, pretty good leg up, whatever leg up against your competition. What happens with some people, even when they quit is they go hit the pits, they go Baccarat. And they just try and double, 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 and try and get their money back. It works sometimes, but if you're a poker player and you want to move up in stakes, you want to stop making these mistakes, you want to feel like you've got a handle on the player pool, you've got to have a handle on yourself first. So if you've gotten any value from this video, hit a like so it can get to more people like you. Consider subscribing for more and I'll see you in the next one.